Hello and welcome back to California Geology. Today I want to wrap up the uh, the glaciers of the Sierra Nevada, primarily with showing you some PowerPoint images. So let's go to the PowerPoint here. Uh, one of the questions I have on the study guide is, uh, during the last ice age, uh, during that Wisconsin or the Tioga glaciation for the Sierra Nevada, there were there was a large ice sheet over North America. And it was really in, in two parts. So the Continental Glacier, I remember I said it went from basically the Canada-US border here all the way down into Kansas and southern Illinois and even Manhattan Island here was one of these glacial moraines left behind when these when this ice lobe retreated. So um, the name of the sheet was called the Laurentide Ice Sheet. Uh, uh, and um, another aspect of it, the one that occurred in the mountains of the, of the west here was, was called the Cordilleran Ice Sheet. So those are the two I want you to know. Cord Cordilleran Ice Sheet and the Laurentide Ice Sheet. And as the glaciers melted and went back, um, you can see sea levels were lower by about 130 to 140 meters here. Um, remember the land bridge here, you can go walk from Siberia over here to, to uh, the Americas. There was also an interior pathway here uh, between the Laurentide and the, um, uh, uh, and the Cordilleran ice sheets. And then um, just to so look at some features, here is an ice field up in Alaska showing how uh, the upper rigid part behaves brittly and we get these, these crevasses forming there. And then um, uh, in, a, in a mountain region, we can uh, over widen and steepen the valleys, making these U-shaped valleys where the glacier occurs. You can see the cirques are up here where the head wall and the ice used to be. Uh, when the ice melts away, you get the tarn. So here's the tarn. They're also called rock basin lakes when they're kind of attached like that. Remember, I called those um, paternoster lakes. Here is where two cirques are meeting here. So we got an arete. Where, where three cirques meet, well, there's one on the back side here, you get a horn. And then um, uh, the Hanging Valley is where uh, we see like, like a truncated spur here. This is called a truncated spur, where the glacier kind of truncated this ridge. And then the, the Hanging Valley sits here, where this tributary once joined the main uh, valley river, but now it's been undercut, making this waterfall Hanging Valley there. Now, um, here is a, 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 a cirque up in the Canadian Rockies, and you can see there's a little bit of ice left there, left there but there's an amphitheater bowl-shaped depression, a tarn. There's a tarn right there. And then this is actually looking from Mount Whitney back down uh, toward the northwest, uh, and we see a, 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 a head wall here where the ice used to be, and here's a tarn, right? So this is a cirque. The tarn is here. And if you look down here, you'll see another another glacial lake here and another one, another one. So these are these Paternoster or, or rock basin lakes going down the valley here. Um, this is an interesting picture. Uh, there's really two things going on here. Uh, we see the, the metamorphic rocks of the Ritter Range here, which are about 100 million years old, and they make a jagged knife edge ridge. Uh, you can see there's cirques going this way. There were, here we're on the east side. Uh, there was cirques on this east side, and there were cirques on the west side. Um, so this is an, an arete. A, a, an arete occurs here. This would be a low pass called the col, the C-O-L. And then um, this is one of those roche moutonnets, right? So in this picture here, you can clearly see that the ice was moving from the mountain front out toward the valley, out toward the east, and it overran this roche moutonnet, polished its backside, and plucked rocks from its front side here. Um, Here's an interesting picture taken from Mount Hamilton, looking back toward the east. So these are the coast ranges here, the Central Valley, and we can actually look right into Yosemite Valley. But what I like about this picture is, notice at the crest of the Sierra Nevada, see these, so what does that resemble? That is an arete, because there were cirques going towards the west, and, and cirques going towards the east. So the crest of the Sierra Nevada itself is an arete, a jagged ridge. Uh, this is actually the Matterhorn, uh, and so the Matterhorn is a good example of, of, uh, of uh, a faceted uh, ridge, and you can see the little bit of glacier ice there and this little break, that's a Bergschrund right there, Bergschrund. And then here's another image of Yosemite Valley. And so how, you know, initially the valley um, formed by river erosion, 
river erosion, and then down cutting as the mountains were being uplifted, rivers cut into their, their base. In fact, rivers uh, have a base level. Their ultimate goal is to reach their base level, which is sea level. So it's cutting down, cutting down. But then um, climate got colder and the area was modified by ice, where the ice is going to over widen uh, and steepen the walls here by plucking and abrasion, right? And then when the ice melts, we get this U-shaped valley, uh, hanging valleys over here, truncated spurs, right? So those are some of the features we've been talking about. And then um, uh, here is the picture of the Merced River. So clearly in this part of the Merced River, it's a V-shaped valley. So it has not been glaciated. As soon as we go uphill over here to see Bridalville Fall in the Yosemite Valley, well, clearly this is a, a, a glaciated valley here. And this would be uh, the truncated spur right here. There's another one here. And this little Bridalville Creek was once a tributary that joined the Merced River, but now the has been widened, it becomes a hanging valley right here, hanging valley. And um, uh, so again, we're seeing the, the hanging valley of Bridal Creek right in here. Now, um, these are up in Tuolumne Meadows, and uh, we're seeing uh, uh, these Roche Moutonnets, where the glacier was moving, in this case, from right to left, right to left here. And this is the famous Lembert Dome. This is right off of uh, Highway 120, the Tioga Pass Road. You can actually park around here. You can easily climb this backside, and you'll often see uh, rock climbers climbing the front here, right? So again, Lembert Dome is really a Roche Moutonnet, Roche Moutonnet. And so here's an example of how um, uh, uh, frozen rocks and sand and silt in the ice will abrade, scour, scratch, put striations, polish the ice. But then if there's any pressure, some of that pressure melting will cause water to form. Water will seep into these cracks. It'll refreeze. But remember, when water freezes, it expands. So when it expands, it's forcing, wedging these pieces out here. It's wedging these pieces out. And then they become part of this uh, glacial ice. It's moving down slope here. And so here's some good example of some glacial polish. Uh, this is actually a picture I took years and years ago up in the northern Sierra Nevada be nice glacial polish on these boulders right here and then um, uh, here's some more glacial polish on a lava flow this is actually the um, the uh, um, devil's post pile over by Mammoth Mountain which is a lava flow which is about 14,000 years old which was overrun by a glacier and then these are examples of glacial erratics so the the boulders here are also granite, just like the bedrock, but they're a little bit different composition than the bedrock. So they've been transported, the glacier melted, and they were dropped left right here. The glacial erratics. And we talked about moraines. So here we have the lateral moraines, uh, medial moraines, uh, uh, end and recessional moraines here. Um, here's a picture of some moraines in Alaska. So you see those same features. Um, this is uh, some moraines in, in Lee Vining Canyon. I actually have some other pictures. So you can see a little bit of the ice here in this, in this dramatization here. But you can see as uh, um, this would be the terminal moraine here. And then as a glacier melted back, it left a recessional. It stalled here for a while, and then it's melted back, and there'd be an end moraine in here. So this is showing some of the rains. So if we look at uh, Lee Vining Canyon, so here's Highway 120 going up to, to Yosemite and Tuolumne Meadows up there, Tioga Pass. And so the glacier was sitting in here, and these, these le the ones that are la la labeled letter O, those are actually the Tahoe moraines. They're about a thousand feet high, these Tahoe moraines, very huge. The glacier was sitting in here. Um, and then uh, it melted back, and then there's another uh, series of moraines here, this one here, the label letter I, and these are the Tioga moraines. So they're nested within the Tahoe, right? And the terminal for the Tioga is right in here. So there's Tioga. And then as it went back, this little R represents a recessional moraine for the Tioga, right? So we have Tahoe, the big moraines, Tioga in here, but then Tioga melted back and it left a recessional right in here. And then here's another picture looking at that recessional moraine in the, in the um, here's again the, the Tahoe, um, the Tioga Pass Road. And so here's that, that um, recessional moraine right in here. For the, Tio for the Tioga. And then here you can actually, the Tioga moraine here, and then the high ridge here would be the Tahoe moraine up, up in here. And then these are the famous uh, Pine Creek uh, moraines. This is taken from an airplane. So this is called the Wheeler Crest by Bishop. And I was showing you an image where 
Uh, these came out to about maybe three miles out of the mountain front, so quite extensive. So here you can clearly see that, um, uh, in fact, there's, there's, there's a principle of cross-cutting relationships here. We see these, this moraine here, which is probably the, the Tioga moraine here, but then you can see there's, a, there's a, a more extensive older moraine that's been cr cut across by this younger moraine, so this probably is a Tahoe moraine in here. So again, two glaciations, the older uh, glacier Tahoe here and the younger Tioga back in here. And so again, um, another place to look for moraines here, this is over by M the Mono Craters, and we're looking back uh, toward the Sierra Nevada, and so this is a um, Parker, Parker Creek in the Parker Valley here. So some, some moraines came out here out of um, a Sawmill Canyon right here and Bloody Canyon over here. And again, you can see that these older moraines were cut by younger moraines here. But in fact, these seem to be even older than Tahoe. So some geologists like to call these moraines either an older Tahoe or the Mono Basin uh, because, because clearly there's a Tahoe moraine right here. So these big ones are actually Tahoe that are going to be, that are cutting across this older moraine here, right? So maybe that's the older Tahoe, the younger Tahoe, and then the Tioga would be in here, nestled in between. Now, um, uh, here's a picture I showed you earlier, and so those Bishop Moraines are back over here. Well, let's stop here. Mm -hmm.